Hi. Say hi. Hi. Welcome back to Rockin' Virtual VBS. Jesus is my rock, right? Do you remember what we talked about yesterday? Hmm. Do you know what we talked about yesterday? Yes. I'll give you a clue. What's that? Oh, rock. He said it. This is Malcolm and he got the answer. He said rocks. Did you say rocks? Now, do you remember about <clears throat> igneous and sedimentary? And just kidding. We didn't talk about that. We made a joke about that, but we talked about Jesus as our rock, right? Do you remember what kind of rock you were supposed to find? A teeny tiny rock? No. Show them a rock we found. What rock did we find? This big and mighty rock. Whoa, check out that bad boy. Whoop, whoop. That's a big and mighty rock. That's our big and mighty rock that reminds us that Jesus is our big and mighty rock, that he protects us, that he's strong, that he's our fortress, that he's in control, right? So Jesus is our protector, our safety, our big and mighty rock. Now, I made a mistake yesterday, <laughs> but I think it's kind of cool, so I'm going to tell you about it. When I was reading our Bible passage yesterday, I said, Psalm 18, verse 2, right? And it says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, or who I look for safety, for protection. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, right? My stronghold. Well, at the end of the video, I accidentally said Psalm 118, 22. So did you notice the difference? Psalm 18.2 is the one that we were actually talking about. But then at the end, I said Psalm 118.22. Don't you think that's a little cool? 18.2, 118.22, Psalms about rocks. Because today our verse is actually Psalm 118.22. And it goes like this. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now, that's kind of a cool verse. You might hear about that. That's got a lot of meaning in there. Now, does anybody want to take a guess? What is a cornerstone? Malcolm, what do you think a cornerstone is? Yeah. Any ideas? I don't know. You don't know? Hmm. Is a cornerstone a stone yeah. that you put in the corner? Yeah. yeah, it's a stone that you put in the corner. So if you're thinking about a builder and he's going to build a whole house, he's got to set one of those stones down first, doesn't he? And the first stone that he sets down is called... Mm -hmm. The cornerstone. Can you say cornerstone? Cornerstone. Okay, he didn't, but that's okay. You can say it, I'm sure. So a cornerstone is the first, but the first one you're going to set down if you are going to build a house. So I'm going to give you an, a little example here. If you're going to build a Lego house on one of these cool guys, does anybody have Legos? We have Legos. All right, well, if you're going to build a Lego house on this board right here, you got to start somewhere, don't you? So you're going to take your first piece and you're going to put it down. I'm going to put mine down right about there. Okay, that's going to be my cornerstone of this house. It's the first and most important one. Now, because I put my Lego right there, that's where I put it. Now I know a lot about the house. I know where it is on the board. I know what direction the wall's gonna go. It tells me a lot about the place and the design and the meaning of the house, right? Well, Jesus is our cornerstone. That means he gives us direction and orientation and design and all of those kinds of things. He tells us what our house is gonna be like. So Jesus is our cornerstone. What about Jesus is our cornerstone? Who rejected the cornerstone, right? The stone the builders rejected? Who did it? Who rejected Jesus? That's a tricky question. What do you think that means? I'm going to give you a minute to think about that very big question. Who rejected Jesus? 
Hmm. You don't know. He doesn't know. Well, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell him. Lots of people rejected Jesus. How about the people who shouted, crucify him? Or the people who said, no, no, you're not the true God. You have to die on the cross. Right? A lot of people rejected Jesus who don't believe in him. But Jesus and the fact that he lived a totally and completely perfect life as our perfect substitute and then died on the cross for our sins, that is the most important piece of our faith, right? That's the cornerstone. That is what shows us what direction our life should have, what design our life should have, because we know Jesus was real. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for my sins so that I can have a perfect home in heaven with him when I die. And that helps us to make choices that are good and God-pleasing and live a life that shows thankfulness and gratitude to God, who is our cornerstone, right? The stone the builders rejected, even though lots of people didn't believe in Jesus and were very bad to him and did very mean things to him, right? He has become the cornerstone, the most important stone. The stone that gives us direction. The stone that if you try to knock the house down, but you take away that part, pff, that house is coming right down, right? The cornerstone. So Jesus is the cornerstone. Now that also means that if you're trying to read the Bible or you're trying to be a Christian or you're trying to live a good life and you decide, okay, well, I agree that it's bad to murder and I agree that it's bad to steal. But that part about Jesus... No thanks. If you say no thanks to believing about Jesus, you're saying no thanks to heaven. You're saying no thanks to the whole thing. Can you believe that? So even if somebody tries to live a really good life and if somebody tries to do really good stuff and pick up lots of garbage and be nice to animals and be friendly and generous, but they don't believe in Jesus, <laughs> They're missing the most important part of the whole thing. So Jesus is our cornerstone. He's that special rock that gives us direction and orientation and helps us make choices that are God-pleasing, right? To follow the Ten Commandments, to think about all the time, what would I do that God wants me to do? Should I make my own choices about what makes me feel good? Or should I make a choice... That is what Jesus would want. Now, if somebody's trying to build a house and they decide, oh, let me get some more Legos. Somebody decides, okay, I'm going to build a house, but I don't know about that Jesus stuff. I'm kind of just going to do what I want to do whenever I want to do it. They're like, okay, well, this part of my life, um, yeah, I'm going to put a rock on my life here. Yep, we're going to build my house over here. Uh, except now society said, whoa, I can't even put this piece down. Not very good at Legos get my six-year-old in here he's a boss all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna do what uh, I want to do what feels good but then somebody's gonna be like oh no everybody's doing this now and this is cool okay so we'll we'll follow that crowd we'll do with that for a little bit and then somebody's like no we changed our minds that's not very nice anymore where do you want it if you do what you want you could put one right there what kind of crazy house are we building if we only do what we want or only do what other people tell us to do or something like that? No way. That's not going to be a very strong house. That's not going to be a house that makes any sense. We need a house that's going to encourage us to live a life that's pleasing to God, that helps us learn about Jesus, to think about what he did for us, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he lived that he was born in a stable. Oh my goodness, wow. The things Jesus has done for us, even though he didn't have to do anything, he was perfect up in heaven. But because he came to heaven and lived a life and had all kinds of temptations and things like that, but stayed strong and always perfect, and then died on a cross for our sins, because he did that, we can live our whole life knowing that he's our big and mighty rock that's in control 
any anywhere you want and that you can have a perfect and that you can have a perfect life in heaven after you die because he won salvation for us so that's what jesus is our cornerstone is all about okay jesus is our cornerstone that fact that jesus died on the cross for our sins and that he rose again so that we can go to heaven when we die that is what our whole faith is all about. This cool Jesus guy, our rock, our big and mighty rock who protects us, who died for us, who loves us, and who is saving our home in heaven for when we go to meet him. So today's rock that I want you to find, this is going to be kind of fun. So if you were a builder, if you were a builder, I want you to find a rock. Today's rock is going to be a rock that would be the first rock you put down. If you're going to build a rock tower, okay? So you're going to build a rock tower. And you're going to think about, I'm going to find a rock that would be the very first rock I would put down, okay? So think about that. That's going to be your rock today. The first rock you would put down if you were going to build a rock tower. So yesterday you found a big and mighty rock or you're making a list and you're going to find a big and mighty rock. And then you're going to find the first rock you would put down in the tower. Okay, so now let's sing a little more. I think you're going to listen to Pastor again. And he's going to teach you about Jesus is a rock and he rolls my blues away. All right, so have fun and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.